Welcome back to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny. Today I'm going to show you how to keep your fire as hot as HE double hockey sticks. Let's start off with setting up your grill. For this video I am going to be using the two zone method and I'm also going to be using a slow and sear with used charcoal. Now there is absolutely nothing wrong with using used charcoal. You're going to want to start off by cleaning the used charcoal and I do that by moving the used charcoal back and forth from one end of my slow and sear to the other end of my slow and sear and if you don't have the slow and sear you can just move them around in your Weber kettle baskets or just on the bottom grate. The point is it's to knock off as much of the ash as you can off of the used charcoal. Now after you've moved it back and forth a few times you should end up with something that looks like this. This is leftover lump and sometimes you can find a rock in your leftover lump charcoal. Just get rid of that. Now we want to make sure that nothing's blocking the airflow from the bottom vent. You've just knocked off all of that ash and it's going to accumulate at the bottom of your pit. Just clean all of that out just so that we can make sure that we have sufficient airflow. Now that our bottom vents are clear of any debris, we're going to go ahead and put the slow and sear back in the Weber kettle. Now that charcoal is actually looking nice and black. You remember what we started with. It was pretty ashy, but after you clean it up, it's going to be good to use. Now, if you don't have a slow and sear, you can do this same setup just by using your Weber kettle baskets. And I have a video where I show you four different charcoal configurations using the Weber kettle baskets. And if you haven't seen that video, check out the link above. Now, if you don't have the Weber kettle baskets, you can also set up your grill just like this with no aftermarket products at all. And I have a video where I show you how to set up two zone cooking just like this. If you haven't seen that video, check out the link above. Now that we have the charcoal grill ready to go, it's time to make sure that we are using the right equipment. Now I'll have links below for everything you see that I'm using in this video. Now I like to use a charcoal chimney starter. They all work pretty well, but I prefer the Weber kettle one, but whichever one you have is fine. I've gotten to where I also like to use a starter whatever. I'm using this fire starter by the Superior Trading Company. It's 100% natural and it's also made in the USA. They come in these little paper cups. I like to use two just to get the fire up and started a little faster. Also like to use a good lighter. This one is a burns o -matic lighter and it really works well when you're trying to start your fire starters and it's really windy outside. And last, use a good charcoal. I'm using a Kingsford Original. There are better brands of charcoal out there, quite frankly, than Kingsford B&B. But this is a good brand of charcoal with a proven record. Now let's start our fire. We're going to fill up the Weber chimney starter. We're going to fill that up about three quarters of the way. Now, I like to say that the third dot from the bottom is about halfway. We're going to fill it up past that mark and then about half the distance from there to the top. And then you should end up with something like this. Remember, I'm not filling this up all the way to the top because I'm starting off with a little bit of used charcoal that's already in my pit. Now we'll get the chimney starter over our fire starters and just have them close enough to the edge to where you can still reach them with the flame of your lighter. Now use the lighter to start up your fire starters. And since we're using two of them, we are sure to have a nice hot flame to get these charcoals started. Now that your fire is going, now we have to know when our fire is ready. The first thing you're going to notice out of the top of your chimney starter is a thick gray smoke. After a few minutes, the smoke is going to start clearing up and it's going to turn a lighter gray and more transparent. 
Also to know about when your fire is ready, you can take a little peek in these holes on the side of your chimney starter and watch the fire rise up the chimney starter. Now the smoke is clear, but it's still not time to use the fire in your chimney starter. You're going to want to wait until the top coals start ashing over. Now these haven't ashed over, so they're not ready to go. Now you can see that some of the top coals are starting to ash over, and that's a sign to me when I like to use the fire in the chimney starter. Now that your fire is ready, it's time to pour it in your charcoal grill. I like to get a firm grip on the handle and give it a single tap. This is gonna shake off some of that loose ash and even stoke your fire a little more. Now with a confident pour, get it into your pit. Once you've poured it, you're gonna to wanna to take a little look inside the chimney starter and just make sure there are no strays left inside. And if there are, you're gonna to wanna to get that into the pit also. If you're using used charcoal, you're gonna to wanna to pour it right on top and you should end up with something like this. We're gonna wait for about two or three minutes and then spread our fire out. Now you're going to start moving the fire left and right, starting from the inside out. And when you're done, you should have a nice, even bed of charcoals. Here's a small step that you don't wanna skip. We're going to let the fire acclimate. So we'll put the grow grate down and then just close the lid. We're also going to make sure that the top and bottom vents are wide open. After about five minutes, you're going to take a look at the top vent and you shouldn't see any smoke coming out of that. You should be having a clean burning fire by now. Now we'll get the lid open because it is time to grill. Now I'm going to get all of my hamburgers down at the same time because I have them on a baking rack. And this baking rack and pan combo, yes, you need it. If you don't have one for yourself, check out the link below. Now close your lid and make sure that the bottom vent and the top vent are still open because you never know. Opening the lid, especially if you have a Weber kettle like this, just might close your vent a little. And after a few minutes, you'll see your temperature gauge go sky high. Now, of course, this is over the fire, but that's a hot fire. And then with a little bit of YouTube magic, your hamburgers could look this good too. I'll get my hamburgers out all at the same time because they're on a rack. Now that you're done grilling, it's time to close off all of your vents, the top and bottom vent, because we're going to suffocate the fire, put the fire out, and use the leftover coals for our next cook. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, why not? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill, and I will see you next time.